I believe that the church is about to experience one of the best years ever. Amen. Ever. And um, <clears throat> just a minute, I want to make sure I get the right thing here. All right, I'm just waiting on my ushers there, and, uh, and I want to give you this. Now, when I get these things like this, and I'm giving them to you, this is what I'm working off of. In other words, this is, this is when I give it to you, this is what I'm believing, and this is the way I'm going to act. I'm going to act like I believe this. Father, thank you for the word in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. He says in Isaiah 61 and verse 1, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to the meek, pardon me. He has sent me to bind up the broken, anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to uh, bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. How many of you remember that in the New Testament? In the New Testament, he said just that. Put it up there, please. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. This is Jesus now talking. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Next verse, please. And then he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down because, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. In other words, Jesus came to fulfill that scripture. He stopped. He didn't go any further. But if we go back to Isaiah 61, where he read that from, and look at verse 2 again, because he left something out. He didn't go as far as the scripture went. It says here in verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, and to comfort all that mourn. I'm saying to you and I that we are entering into a time of comfort. God is comforting his people. In other words, he, he is going to take things that had been troubling us in the past and those things are about to be dealt with. He, he is about, yep, that whatever's been tampering with your destiny and whatever's been trying to afflict you or humiliate you, whatever's been against your peace and your progress, your career, business, job, children, everything else, God is now coming against it because he is now going to comfort his people. We're entering into this season that I preached some years ago, but now God says this is a time that that's coming about. Now, the term that I use is found in Hebrews again, and Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 30, because this is it in the New Testament. He says, for we know him that has said, vengeance belongeth to me and I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall do what to his people? Amen. Shall judge his people. So what am I saying to you now? This whole idea of vengeance. Vengeance has to do with uh, God's justice. It's nothing to do with hate. It's nothing to do with some emotional resentment or any kind of retaliation, but it's a necessity for punishing offenders and it proceeds out of a love for justice. So that is the vengeance of the Lord. It took the vengeance of the Lord to deliver Moses out of Israel uh, and the children of Israel 
out of Egypt. They were in bondage and God spoke about Pharaoh. Look what he says in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 19. He says this about uh, Moses, uh, ex to Moses about the children of Israel and Pharaoh. He said, I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. Glory to God. He said, for I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. Of, and after that, what will he do? He will let you go. I'm just telling you, God has given the, the, the enemy a chance to let you go. And he has tried to keep you in bondage, in bondage to this, in bondage to debt, in bondage to sickness, in bondage to marriage problems. But God is saying, now I'm going to stretch out my hand. I'm just saying whatever's been troubling you in the past is not going to trouble you anymore. Whatever will not let you go, God's plan is going to come to pass in your life. Whatever's been resisting your progress is going to be put down starting tonight. Your season of manifestation is here. I said your season of harvest is here. That every force that's been assisting the Gentiles is going to be put down. And it's not been people. You're not fighting people. That's why you don't hate people. But it's the devil that you've come against. And I'm saying God's going to have to deal with him. But he's going to deal with him through you understanding this principle that God is now in your life. And whatever the enemy has been using to hold you back, you are breaking forth starting tonight at 12 midnight. Things that have been held back are now going to be released. Whatever's been resisting you is going to be stopped tonight at midnight. And everything tampering with your destiny, it, everything been afflicting you, humiliating you, been against your progress or your business, whatever it is, it's going to have to let you go. Why? Because you're entering into this season of the book being opened once again and the vengeance of the Lord coming in. Now, not only did you, would you get vengeance, but in chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30, for we know him that said, vengeance belongeth to me and I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. What does recompense mean? It has to do with to compensate. It means to make pay damages. It means to return for equivalent anything that was done or suffered. It means to make amends. I'm just saying that whatever you've suffered during these years or times that God has wanted you to progress, complete your assignment and so forth, I'm here to tell you that the devil who has been stopping you is now going to have to pay damages. Not only is he going to let you go, but he's going to pay for the time that he held you. Every, every bit of interest that you would have gotten on the money that you would have made, the devil's going to have to pay for it. I said the devil's going to have to pay for it. And God is making it so now that the enemy's house is about to be stripped. I, I said the enemy's house is about to be stripped. I'm saying that where he has stolen from you and robbed from you, God kept good notes as to everything that's been stolen from you because it's about to be payday. And I'm saying your payday has come. God is now going to do some wonderful things. Now, let me just show you us a sample of this whole idea of vengeance and recompense and how it works. And this is starting at Genesis chapter 20. And this is when a man named Abimelech, he had a dream and God told him, you are verse three, you are but a dead man for the woman which you have taken, she's another man's wife. So this king had taken Abram's wife, Abraham's wife, and put, it in, put her in his palace and trying to keep her for his woman. But God came to him. I said, God came to him. I said, whatever they've been holding from you, God's coming to him. And nobody can say no to God. 
I said, nobody can say no to God. As powerful as King was, and God said, verse, verse six, he said, and God said to him in a dream, yea, I know that you did this in integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me, and therefore suffered I not you to touch her. So he couldn't touch her. So I'm letting you know right now that God has you on an assignment that the devil can't touch you. Lord have mercy. Help me, Holy Ghost. The devil can't touch you. God, see, this, this, you know, somebody called me with a prophetic word, said, Pastor, I got a word for you. I said, give it to me. Said, Pastor, let me tell you something. You think that, that what you were doing and then the bank and so forth and so on, he said, you think that was some money? What God is about to do with this church right now will make that bank look like food stamps. I said, Lord, mercy. Over to God. I'm here to tell you, God has not been, he's kept good records as to what's going on and we about to get paid. We, I said, we about to get paid. So I'm saying to you right now, whatever you've been struggling with, you are coming into a season of rest. You're coming into a season of recompense where God is about to compensate you and pay you for damages. The wicked people, a uh, wicked uh, enemy has tried to keep things from you or steal things or make it so that you couldn't get business deals or business started and so forth. All that's over. Forget all of that. This is a new day for you. This is a set time of your deliverance. This is a comfort time of God's people. I'm talking about things that have been in your body that's been trying to hold you. I'm talking about things that have been in your business that haven't been working right. I'm talking whatever it is, God is a breaking all of that right now. Praise God. We're coming into the finest time of the church. God told me about property. He's about to make the church the biggest landowners in the city. And don't try to figure out how he's going to do it. When he tells you go point at the, at the, at the Sears Tower, just go point at it. See, y'all ain't doing nothing me right now. I'm saying get this natural mind, put it aside. God's about to do it himself. He told me years ago, you can ask my wife, he said, I'm saving Chicago for myself. Well, you're going to be his hands and his feet and his mouthpiece. So get ready, get ready, get ready. Real estate is about to come in your hands. New ideas about to come into your hands. New avenues of revenues about to come into your hand. Starting 12 o'clock. I said starting 12 o'clock. Healing is going to miraculously come into your life. How many of y'all believe that? If you believe it, get up and shout about it. If you believe what I just said.